All right, welcome everyone. Today we're just going to take a couple minutes to look through a sketchbook that I finished quite a while ago, and I never did. <clears throat> excuse me, I never did a little flip through of it to uh, like a little sketchbook tour, right? To show the finished product. Just kind of a little documentation, a little tour. So. We all know what's going on. This is a Nebula Note sketchbook. And you can see, see their, their logo here. Make your color story with Nebula. I didn't use very much color in this. You can see here the first page is pretty much dedicated to doing some testing with various inks and this page was with some sort of dip pen. You'll notice that I, I think this is the dip pen sent to me by the pen wizard of Norfolk, if you remember that video. It was, very, it was a handmade pen where he made all the pen nibs himself. So if you'll notice that in this sketchbook, the, the pages are pretty thin, so I only drew on one side of each page but they're not so thin that stuff was bleeding through too much and going to the next page, even when I was putting tons and tons of ink on each page. So it's kind of a nice balance. I don't mind drawing on one side of each page. I like writing with it a little more than I like drawing with it, apparently. Nice loose scribbly one there. Sometimes I like writing and drawing. Uh, here was one where I was comparing three different types of, what are they called, like technical pens, Koenor, Staedtler, Rotring, and I divided the drawing up that way. We've scheduled you for the next part of the procedure on Tuesday. I'm trying to figure out what kind of pen this was. I like how the ink looks. The indentations that lays on the paper almost make me think it was some kind of ballpoint pen. Similar to this one, perhaps, but I'm not sure. Kind of a mechanical thing going on here. I like, I like making cables going off the screen here. <laughs> I don't know why I said screen <laughs> off the page. It kind of makes you, and pipes, pipes on this side, cables and tubes on this side. Kind of makes you wonder about what else there might be. I feel like some of these things were initially put in my head a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away on Tatooine where uh, I don't remember what those things were called that Luke always had to go out and check. They're con like condenser things that were always... You guys know what I'm talking about? Someone will know. They're just like random little technological what's it sitting out in the desert near Luke Skywalker's house. Evaporator somethings. Some sort of launcher, stabilizer, legs that you towed behind. A little hitch there. A little diagram. Scribbles explaining everything in case you don't understand. Portrait of someone saying no. I've always been. I've always liked, like, uniforms and, and uh, collars. I like this area of clothes. Collars and, like, the buttons and stuff. Yeah. 
Here we have a turret, 400 meters tall approximately. Shoots nails. Keeping it nice and loose here for several drawings now. It's been pretty nice and loose. I think these all seem like they're like the same type of pen. This is probably my least favorite drawing in the sketchbook. I don't know why. It just is. I used to do this with suns when I was little. I had, I had sunglasses to them. <laughs> Some words mixed in just for a little bit of fun you can read these if you want to pause some gun scribbles most of these not real even though these ones down here look a little bit more real and recognizable this one looks a little bit like a Uzi knives Kind of grouping up words that I think feel the same in my head. Maybe, I don't know. Oh yeah, this one I was testing out a, a Muji pen. It's like a, one of those click pens that has the little buttons on the side that change colors. You know, it has like six different colors inside the same pen. Just scribbling. These are like, I like these little things because they're like their own, each one is like its own little tiny condensed and contained doodle. Obviously inspired by some maybe Chinese or Japanese or Korean letters or characters. Something definitely Asian there. And here this is, I'm pretty sure this is back to fountain pen at this point. Mm -hmm. Pipes, valves, tanks, blobs, fungus, growth, seepage or smoke or a leak, a building, or like some sort of something on stilts like a lodge, but you know, they always at the beach, if you go to the beach, sometimes all the houses have nothing on the first floor because of flooding. But it looks also slightly Japanese or something. I don't know. I like this one. I had traveled to Glacier National Park, which obviously looked nothing like this, but maybe I was just thinking about the way that I don't know, when I went there, there were like seven, maybe even only like five glaciers, and they told us about how when the park was founded, there used to be like 25 glaciers, and so then I was just following in my mind the, the logical progression of how it would eventually look if, you know, society kept going, I guess. No glaciers, and only us building stuff there. I think I, I like this next series of images. I think I was using the Rotring pens again, which I haven't been using much lately just because I got fed up with how ornery they are. An automatic natural selector. I like these pipes and hoses and tubes. Let's touch abdominal valves. Why don't we? This one's something up in the clouds. I like how oh, I got some nice shading here. Probably could have even made some of it darker and it could have looked better. But I have problems with shading. I like these, these lines here. That looks good. Good job, Peter. This is a ballpoint pen, no doubt. Pull start, gas cap gas tank 
It's kind of inspired by a lawnmower in many ways, except for the ways in which there would be wheels and blades and a handle, maybe. Secrete here. Guys like my headset. I bought this at uh, the grocery. <laughs> I bought this at the grocery store for eleven dollars. I always wanted a headset. I really bought it because the the headphones look so retro, kind of bad, I guess. But then it came with a microphone too, and it does it sound okay? I don't know. I thought I'd give it a try. <laughs> uh. Mm. Cat, maybe? Just a guess? I don't know. These do make some nice textures on the paper. Even on the back of the paper. Because the paper's thin. Are you sure this is what you want to do? I guess so. I mean, maybe. I don't know. This drawing does look a little bit hesitant and unsure. So I'm, you know. This one looks a little bit like a face. I like this caption. Compare with anything. That's good. I like that attitude. Or compare with everything. I think our brains are kind of already doing that. I think I was using a, like a very big bold Posca pen for these ones maybe. Paint pen. Splashing in the pool style. These ones look kind of like very abstracted faces. This one maybe looks like a blender to me. Combination of thick and thin lines. Well, these next ones are a series of drawings in which I was, I think I made a tweet asking for crazy impossible inventions that I should try drawing. A very elaborate and complicated machine that only produces ham and cheese sandwiches. And then I went and drew it. And then I realized that at nowhere in here did I <laughs> add a, mechanism for adding ham so I had to mark out the ham so it's just cheese sandwich with mayo and mustard so it's not too bland sliced bread sliced cheese so not the end of the world cheese sandwiches aren't that bad a motivation actuator and procrastination inhibitor uh Motivation actuator is this drill here that can lower onto the top of the head. And these uh, hammers, which can swing down to the side of the head, are the procrastination inhibitors. And it's all hooked up to the brain via these diodes. So they keep track of your motivation and procrastination levels and react accordingly. It makes sense. It's a nice device. Order now. A nuclear-powered banana straightener. Here's where we put in the banana. It's right now curved. Uh, but then these series of gears and rods and pistons would turn. Here's the turbine and the turbine blades, the fuel rods, uh, the nuclear fuel rods, and then the they. They heat up the water, right, which creates, creates steam power to turn the turbine. There's gears. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. I have to lift this one up because there's something very dark behind it that shows through the paper. Atomic reverse death ray makes people feel better than before. 
So the basic idea is, here's the target slash victim. It's a pretty normal death ray setup, except that, look, here's the receptacle object. Usually you would put a power crystal at this point in the death ray setup, and you would put the target slash victim over here at this point of the death ray setup, and they would be obliterated. Uh, but instead, you put the person over here, and all the power, the negative energy, the, ne the, the bad vibes, if you will, are used as part of the energy and power in the death ray and are channeled into the receptacle object, which is strong enough to absorb all of that. And then we just put those in a closet or a landfill or something. So it works. I've, I've been, uh, I, I get the treatment twice a week. This one is kind of a half-done thing. Once again, thick and thin lines. Very thick, very thin. Never really finished that one. I posted this one on Instagram, I don't think with much of a caption. I think it was, to me, it was this part was supposed to look like kind of a a vagina, and then this is supposed to be, I don't know, some sort of weird flower coming out of it. But I didn't see too many people comment that about it, which was interesting to me, because sometimes I draw things that aren't supposed to look like vaginas or penises, and then people comment that that's what they do look like. So it's like, you can't really win. Whatever you do, people will see something different in it. I like these ones. I like, I've always enjoyed drawing diagrams and labels, but usually I don't draw the arrows and lines all curvy and curly like this, or just put numbers. I like all the arrows, curvy lines in this one. Ballpoint pen. This one is roach ring, I think. Another test page here. Just little doodles and stuff. More testing. Trying things out. I wonder what color this is. It's whatever. I think it's this. I never... What's the point of a test page if I don't write the color of the ink that I used? Maybe it's on this test page. I don't think it's... Hmm, I'm not very good at documenting things. That's not, that's not anything new. And since... This, I feel like maybe this is one of the first times I've tried drawing this weird little wobbly edged triangle beam and then filling it with dots. Since then I feel like I've done that a couple times. I kind of like that effect. kind of blobby piles. Hmm. Post-it notes. I feel like here is something else I've tried again since then is uh, kind of grids of dots and circles. I like this one. The drawing is kind of broken up into different areas. Like this part is almost completely separate from this one. This one, obviously, I, I just started drawing circles and then draw another circle with a little pattern. It's kind of like a weird different version of the mandalas I used to draw, but with a weird kind of more straight edge technical, and kind of in a sense more wobbly edged lines. I used to be much more careful, and now I'm enjoying being less careful, because these wobbly lines are in a way more enjoyable to me. I don't know about this one. So 
Here's the doors to the cafe. I meant to write Constantine, but I'm, I misspelled it. Some stippling here in multiple areas. Trying to add like some some S, some levels of like repetition and rhythm and like this area kind of imitates this area with these lines here and these lines here. So there's like imitation within different parts of the drawing. Want to get a coffee sometime? This is a very broad fountain pen, whatever I used here. Well, I like this one. I like all the the textures I got with these lines. This little circle here, that's cool. I feel like maybe I could have, could have, should have, would have even like colored in a lot more of this solid black on some sections and it could have made it even more interesting instead of leaving so much white space or black space to balance out the white space and the, the drawn areas. I guess it's just the, maybe it's just because I keep, the, the, the pages I'm drawing on are all these, this vertical arrangement that I I feel like I draw a lot of these things that are just like, they're kind of like very crazy complex tree houses. Like this, similar to maybe this. Maybe I'm overthinking it. This maybe. Wait, where was I? This, this, maybe this. I just like stacking these shapes on top of each other and they end up looking like these weird, complicated uh, towers. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's a rut. Maybe it's just an idea my brain is enjoying. There's more of these in other sketchbooks. It's just like stacks of shapes. This one looks like some kind of alien relic or, I don't know, this is kind of like a weird, like a stomach, a fleshy thing cut open. I like how I darkened a lot of this though, so it gives it a little bit more 3D. Oh, this looks like it could be kind of a weird mouth thing in there, or like a split open spine. Ten seventy one Fifth Avenue, New York, New York. I wonder if that's like an actual place I was. Ten. Oh, that's oh, that's the Guggenheim Museum. I guess. Oh, this is my design for the new, the redesign of the Guggenheim Museum in downtown New York. Well, I guess this does kind of look like a, a skyline of New York back there. I think I do remember that now. It is interesting. Here, here I am experimenting with doing some, some darker, denser backgrounds to things. I, I, like, the, I like the very big border I left around this one also. So a few things jutting out into it. Some more, see, look here, I explored a little more darkness, dark background. And you can see these, these little like ribs almost. These also existed here. So things are kind of continuing from one drawing to the next. The, the grid of dots and circles, we saw that. Back here. And there's dotted lines we saw over here. So things are, and, and the big borders, once again, 
You saw that right here? So it's cool to see how things are connected from one drawing to the next. Yeah, I like it. Some kind of uh, these little ellipses kind of give it a little, I think this is my attempt to give it a more, bit more of a 3D feeling. Pumpernickel, despotic, sumptuous, part, another part, heft, heart, loiter, tense, simple, carpet, sandals, cancerous, hip fire. I think that's just me choosing words that pop into my head and that I like. I like this little part down here. It's a satisfying piece. Ooh. Some more darkness in the background, and I like these little vines I added. It's a nice drawing. I had a little skull there with like a fungus on top. Good job, Peter. Not too often I add recognizable things to my drawings, for better or for worse. I feel like I could have maybe added some more darkness around these leaves poking out because they, I don't know, they're almost too bright. I feel like more darkness in general could have been good, even though there's already a lot of darkness. I was still shying away from it. Somehow. Hmm, these are like little leaves or fruits or something. Not sure what I was toying with here. This one's a little half-baked. I think I was using a pen that I didn't like very much. I can see here, even just in the parts I was coloring in, that it didn't seem to be going very well. Doesn't The lines don't seem very satisfying. I mean, even just compared to these lines, these lines look so much more satisfying. This one seems a little squiddish over the top. I like all the texture. Is this just me a big video of me <laughs> patting myself on the back? Interesting contrast here between the top and this section. Almost like this is... This part is almost like an explanation for this part. Like, this is the city, this is the subway diagram. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. This is the computer, this is the circuit diagram, you know what I'm saying? If they go together like that. This is the this is the animatronic, um, like m movie prop. These are all the. This is the mechanism inside. I like this one. See me, it, well, I like this one because. I figure out how to do, it looks like a portrait, right? Here's the eyeball, the nose, the weird lips, neck, and like some weird tendons and shoulder. But I also worked in that, once again, we see the grid of dots and circles and the darkness. I like that. And of course, the things I always do, like the little lines for texture and all the wiggly squigglies and blobs. Mm-hmm. I like this one. I think this one was very absent-mindedly done at an airport or something. So I was just sitting around. Hmm. This one looks like a either an alien growth or monument. Added. It's like I added like mountains back there for a bit of sense of scale or size. I like how I have this part here for a little bit of contrast. Like this part's a little bit more plain and simple and then more dense and detailed here. I feel like I got the idea for how to draw some of this like, like the darkness of like it almost looks like the inside of a mouth or something. I got like this technique, the idea for how to draw this from looking at some of the weird aliens in, uh, <laughs> in Calvin and Hobbes when I was a little kid. Like that stuck with me that long. 
dotted lines. I feel like we saw some of those earlier. Like the ribs sticking out. Saw those. This pen doesn't seem to have been working very well, but I powered through whatever pen I was using. It looks good. I don't know. I have mixed feelings about this one. I feel like this one is another one that could have done with more, more contrast. It's not the end of the world. These little things here are inspired by like diagrams of molecules, like molecule, how they're like strung together. I don't know how to explain it, but maybe you know what I mean. Kind of more of the same here, but it's not a bad thing. I'm sure I had it. This one just looks like it was a, a it was just fun to draw. Okay, deep down, that's really all I want when I sit down and draw is that I enjoy the process. If I get anything more out of it than that, then that's just an extra bonus. This one's cool. I like the, whatever this is here, I like how I added some lines, some details with the dotted, the stippling, and the border. I used to do this quite a bit, add a border, mostly because it's kind of interesting, but also kind of shrinks your drawing space a little bit, so... I mean, these pages aren't very big, but even so. Yeah, here I did it again. These things kind of look like sharks. A lot of cool different little textures here. Like I, I got some line width, line weight variety here that I don't usually do. Usually like every single line I draw is like the same width and weight. But here I, I mixed it up a little bit, which I'm happy with. I feel like this section here used to be, is inspired by pictures I used to look at, like cross sections of the earth, like different types of soil and stuff like that. I feel like topsoil, like rock. I don't know where I would look at pictures like that, but that's kind of what that's inspired by. <laughs> look at me adding a little bit of color, some yellow and blue, and I quickly <laughs> quickly got discouraged and didn't even finish coloring in the drawing. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Some kind of machine here. Oop, skipped one. These ones were several months ago, but they, I still feel like I just drew them. It's weird. I like, I, I do this a lot, I feel like, where I have like a mass, something big getting a little bit smaller, and then it gets really smaller because, I mean, really small because then there's like this little section here where, I don't know, there's like a lot of tension or weight, and there's like a base. It's almost like drawing a sculpture I saw or something like that. But if I really want to do that, I need to, I mean, I don't need to, but I mean, I'm starting to do it a little, like, add some shading to make it look a little bit more 3D. This one, when I add things like this, they almost seem like a little bit symbolic to me. Like, what is, look, not that I actually think they symbolize something, but I look at other actual symbolic drawings and I like them, even if I don't care what they symbolize, I, just the organization, like there's a hierarchy, something big here, things radiating out from it, so on. I like the repetition here, like there's something here, and then these shapes are kind of also repeated here, up in the top, and the stippling, the lines. The darkness, I think I did a good job with the darkness behind this shape. And a very simple border here. Could have maybe added more darkness, like this here. Could have maybe... See, I, I, the, I do such... I'm so careful about drawing these lines that I have a hard time coming back over and 
just covering them up with solid black, even though I think that really would make it look more interesting to look at in, in the end. This one looks like I was trying to add in the, the feeling of some sort of perspective, like there's kind of a vanishing point there, but it doesn't really stay co cohesive throughout the whole drawing, which is okay. It's kind of like an abstract vanishing point. I like this uh, border I did though with the, the weird little circles and dots, kind of a gradient of circles. Once again, this kind of reminds me of Calvin and Hobbes. I used to, if you, if you haven't gathered, I used to read Calvin and Hobbes all the time when I was little, and that sometimes there were aliens and they spoke a language that looked kind of like this, I feel like. Maybe I'm misremembering, though. Maybe I'm manufacturing memories. I feel like I do that a lot. I feel like... I don't know if I intended it when I drew this, but I feel like this is pointing a gun at itself, or maybe it's like repairing itself with some sort of rivet gun or something. Interesting. Once again, these like little curving row of circles. We saw that same kind of thing back here. And lines of curving dots. We saw those back back here a little bit. Back here a little bit. Back here. I know I'm going backwards a lot. This is the one I was trying to find, like these. I like the dotted lines. They look good. Well, look at this. This one was very different. I don't know what got into me for this one. I don't know why I drew this winner. Because this is very different, I feel like, than things I normally draw. I mean... The subject is different, but I guess the blobs are, are very similar to what I normally draw. I just turn the blobs into speech bubbles. I like it, though. It'd be cool if I could figure out how to keep channeling whatever energy I had that day that let me draw something like this. Oh, blue. We've seen some of this stuff before. The ribs sticking out. The rows and patterns of things, tots. It's an interesting blue. It bothers me a little bit just because it lets you see all the little individual pen strokes where I colored everything in, but that is also interesting just in the sense that it gives you some texture to everything. Texture you normally can't see that well. I like the, the gradient of the stippling here, all the dots, I mean the little circles in here. So like a weird electrical magical tuning fork that's sticking on the top of this structure. This is a paper airplane. Apparently, my friend re reminded me of this later. He said, apparently I had just gone out to the lake for a weekend with my friends and we had had a paper airplane making competition. And he's like, hey, I saw you drew a paper airplane in one of your drawings. And I think I had like subconsciously put this little shape here. Like I didn't mean to make a paper airplane. I was just like, there was space up here at this corner. I wanted to put a cool shape in there. I didn't realize, realize it looked like a paper airplane until he pointed it out. This is another one where I was trying to kind of create some sort of more monolithic shapes in some of my drawings instead of just filling the whole thing with this sort of design. Even though I love this, it's like, this is like very kind of meditative, therapeutic, but then it's almost overwhelming, I feel like, to fill a whole page with this. Maybe I just need to find some balance. Because I, if I had a whole fa page filled with this, I'd still be happy with that drawing. Like, I'm not trying to discourage myself from doing this, but still I'm just trying to open up other pathways, you know, other directions, other options for myself with, I don't know. 
I like it. It's a little bit weird how it's completely split in the middle. Maybe there should have been another other way to do this, but it's all right. Very fine lines here, lots of details. I think my favorite part of this one is just this little thing here that's like, it's like a little balloon, and there's like a string and another little balloon or something, just a little thing hanging up to the side there. I like all the little, there's lots of, there's like a ton of circles in this drawing. You can probably find like a hundred circles or more. Probably 200, not counting just all the little dots. This is like a weird alien dog or frog face down here. Hmm. Oh, that's the last drawing. Thanks for watching, everyone. Yeah, I finished this sketchbook quite a while ago, and basically what happened was I was telling myself, I was putting it off because I was saying, hey, if I can get all these scanned in and because I have a few books I've made. I self-publish them, put them on YouTube so that people can have this for themselves and flip through it and look at the drawings if they want to, you know, get some inspiration or ideas for their own drawings or art or just because they want to look at it. So I was telling myself, if I can put off doing the sketchbook flip through until I have that ready and on the internet for people to buy, then it'll be better for my wallet. But I just can't put it off anymore because then I'll just put it off forever and you know how life is. It's crazy. I have a million things. Or maybe I don't have a million things. I don't know how it all works, but I'll I'll get them all scanned in. And if you want a book of these to look through, eventually it'll be available. Check back in one year or five years or ten years. Hopefully it'll be available one day. But some of my books are available of other drawings, just not these at the time of me recording this, but check the description. If you're watching this in 10 years, it might be available by now for pretty cheap. They're usually like $14 or less or more. I don't know. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. As always, hopefully this mic worked okay since it was less than $14. I just like how it looks. I have this mic over here that I probably should have been using, which was like two hundred dollars. <laughs> it's very nice, expensive mic. Uh, anyways, uh, see you guys later. Goodbye.